The 20-sided die, or D20, is the most famous and infamous of the dice used in role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons. Players often describe a roll of the D20 as fate itself, or invoking the will of the dice gods. Despite its significance in RPGs and the D20's iconic status as a symbol of mainstream nerdiness, few people, even few devoted fantasy role players and self-proclaimed dice goblins, know the truth of how and why the D20, or any of the other weird dice, became associated with role-playing games. But after watching this video, you will. Because I'm Bob, this is where we learn how to have more fun playing RPGs together, and... Oh, uh, Most fantasy RPG fans would be smart to assume that their favorite die is just another carryover from Napoleonic or medieval wargaming, beloved by the creators of Dungeons & Dragons. Things like hit points, armor class, morale, and other game mechanics that have come and gone in various RPGs, many of these are rooted in war games, after all. But that smart assumption would be wrong. Mostly. Remember that. It's important later. So first, if we look into one of D&D's uh, immediate predecessors, Chainmail, Rules for Medieval Miniatures by Gary Gygax and Jeff Perrin, the former being one of D&D's co-creators. Gary Gygax, inventor of Dungeons & Dragons. Greetings! There are no references to 20-sided dice. All the target numbers are based on rolling the familiar D6. And this makes sense, too. For decades, six-sided dice had been the standard for representing chance in war games, board games, and of course, gambling. So why not early RPGs, too? These cubes are easy to manufacture, pack, and buy anywhere. And if six outcomes aren't enough, you can simply roll more than one at a time. But of course, rolling two or more d6s at once tilts the randomness by establishing a bell curve of results and actually making it easier to design rules around the most or least probable outcomes. For that very reason, hundreds of cool role-playing games today have circled back from the D20 and returned to using multiples or pairs of D6s. One quick example of a 2D6 game from the fantasy genre is Legend in the Mist by Son of Oak, sponsoring this video. It has fun, familiar mechanics for anyone who's tried D&D or a Powered by the Apocalypse game, but Legend in the Mist is built firmly upon narrative and player agency, where each character has multiple, possibly conflicting motivations, and you can change your character's abilities by following one theme over another. But what really captured my attention is the setting described as rustic fantasy and based more genuinely on settings like Lord of the Rings through its mysterious portrayal of magic and monsters. You can check it all out on Kickstarter today using the link below so they know who sent you. And this brings us right back to Chainmail by Gary Gygax and Jeff Perrin, which had a fantasy supplement of rules for creatures found in The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, like hobbits, balrogs, ants, and orcs. But according to some articles and blog posts documenting Gygax's early work on D&D, he felt that the D6 didn't quite fit this theme. Fortunately for Gygax, some of his contemporaries were already experimenting, not only with their own fantasy adventure game, but also with weird dice. Dave Arneson, who would soon become D&D's co-creator with Gygax, got the idea to use weird dice from his gaming buddy, David Wesley. While Wesley and Arneson were both innovative gamers, they were obsessed with how older war games were run. And according to this old forum post from Wesley, that's where he first got the idea to try using weird dice. Back in 1965, I read the rules to a game published in 1880 that said one could use a 12-sided teetotem instead of a six-sided die. I had seen a set of models of the regular polyhedra in my high school trig class and decided that a 12-sided teetotem must be the 12-sided thingy. Wanting to try out the game, I went to school, got out the Edmund Scientific Supplies Catalog, and ordered one set of the polyhedra from them for $6. Gasoline was 20 cents a gallon then, so that would be about $66 in today's money. The set of five polyhedra came with the faces already numbered to make it easy to see that there were 12 sides on a dodecahedron or 20 on an icosahedron, which made them easy to use as dice. 
when Dave Arneson, one of the guys in our group, invented his fantasy role-playing game and took it to Gary Gygax to be cleaned up and published, they decided to use the cool polyhedral dice. In Arneson's own words, magic, being the strange, arcane thing that it is, cried out for strange dice. Obviously, Gygax agreed, but funny enough, David Wetzley didn't. His post continues, they decided to use the cool polyhedral dice even though I told them that they should just use regular dice because no one is going to buy your game for $10 if they then have to spend another $6 to get the special dice before they can play it. But they ignored me, and of course, Dungeons & Dragons did not sell, and no one has ever heard of it. Gotta love his sense of humor here, and it sounds like we can thank David Wesley not only for introducing these unique dice to Arneson and Gygax, but also for convincing them to include the dice in the box sets. And remember what we said about these dice mostly not coming from war games? Wesley goes on to say that his coveted wargaming 12-sided teetotem was never exactly a 12-sided polyhedral die, rather he learned later that it's just a top with 12 sides. However, we aren't quite at the origin of the D20 in all of gaming. A few short years before Wesley got his hands on them, Freda F.S. Sieve patented the Zaz Polyspheres game in 1963, using the same D4, 6, 8, 12, and 20, but in Zaz, not a sponsor by the way, players roll all five dice at once, adding all the pairs and anything over 12 on the D20, getting bonuses for three or four of a kind, or quote, blast off when you get no matches and roll under 12 on the D20. And there you have it, the history of, well, uh, there's another game? Going back a few more decades, there's a patent from 1925 from one Hill Bernstein using a D20 with letters on most of the faces and the words Honest Abe on two of the faces, perhaps the original crit hit or fail, but I couldn't find anything on how to actually play the game. So after all that, we have finally covered the history of, oh, there's more. Okay, so there's apparently no record of a 20-sided polyhedron used for gaming purposes between 1925 and then way back to ancient Rome around the second century AD and a little bit before them, the ancient Egyptians, a few centuries BC, had the faces in Greek symbols. And no one knows if their die was used for a game or perhaps some sort of divination ritual, but in either case, they were obviously invoking the same dice gods we honor today. So if you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your gaming group. Remember to check out our sponsor, Legend in the Mist, linked below, or another fine video like the one on your screen. Thanks to the Bob World Builder patrons for making this video possible. Thank you for your support, and keep building.